Yeah, I might, I might do that. So one of the things with my bicep being torn and you know being malfunctioning, so my shoulders started giving me some problems. And so I was doing floor presses for a long time, but I forgot one of my fans sent me this rep board. You guys remember a couple videos ago somebody sent this to me. And so uh, I want to say thank you. This is the first time I'm actually using it. And I think it might be good for me. I haven't benched this heavy a very long time because of my shoulder. You know, like obviously, you know, you've been doing a lot of shit for, you know, people on YouTube and helping a lot of the younger men yeah. out there. But like, what made you like start all the like, like helping, you know, men now, right now? I gotta be honest, everything that I offer the world comes as a product of me trying to help myself. You know what I mean? So, like being in the gym, because yeah. I wanted to play football when I was a kid. Then I wanted to be strong as an adult. Yeah. And so, because I get excited about something, I often want to share it with everybody. Even when I was a kid, I come across something new, I want to tell everybody about it. I want to yeah. teach you how to do it. And I'm like, I want to fill my mind with it. So, Strength Camp was a byproduct of me wanting to be the strongest version of myself physically. And so I shared it with the world, but I also, have always had a long strong desire to be a good man to know what a man of virtue is and so I've spent years studying religion and philosophy and all these things and so when I moved towards creating grounding camp and making it an all men's uh, program it wasn't about lifting anymore it was about mentoring to the soul because you know we're body and soul so I already built strength camp to mentor to men's bodies right. so grounding camp is to mentor the soul so it's all the things that I've been learning and doing and applying and going through in my own soul's journey strengthening of my own inner power that grounding camp is about so it's like strength camp for the soul really yeah. strength camp for the soul so like briefly tell me what is grounding camp say somebody Say I got a guy that wants to go to grounding camp. What do they expect to go when they sign up and meet you out there in New York? What are they looking to, you know, do? Well, the number one thing is you got to be called to grounding camp because I can't convince you that you need to be there or want to be there. It's something that comes from, again, the soul. You know, you go to the gym, you go to strength camp because it's the body. Damn, I need to get stronger. I need to build up my body. But there's a soul call, and every man experiences it, what I call different life path initiation phases. These phases happen typically around every 12 years. So you remember when a boy's going from being a boy to a, an adult into a, a young man around the age between 12 and 14, our ancestors understood that he's going through his first major life path initiation. Age 24 is the next one. And it's funny because the majority of the men that I find that follow me are about 24 years old. And it's because it's about that time, just like a 12 year old, that you need that mentorship, you need that mirroring, you need that guidance and support and love from older men. And so it was no coincidence. I didn't discover this until later, but when I look back and I'm like, oh shit, that's why all these 24 year olds are hanging out with me. Let me take this off while I'm talking. Uh, <laughs> that's the reason why. And then it really clicked for me when I turned 36. Because when I turned 36, which is the third round of 12, I went through my own deep, transformative, dark uh, process. Right. I learned about initiation processes as our ancestors did it by studying anthropologists like Mercer Eliade, uh, Robert Moore, and the archetype of initiation. And, so, and that's where I learned about King Warrior, Magician Lover. All these things I filled my mind because I was going through a hard transition. I was going through a dark period in my life. 36. And so as I'm filling my mind with all this stuff, I learned that what's required during these life path initiation phases for all men when they're called are a sacred space. There needs to be a time set away from society in order for this process to take hold. That's why our ancestors would take the boy out of the home and take him out into the woods somewhere mm -hmm. and, and starve him for four days and let him, like my brother did, an official Native American. Uh, initiation they made it they took him out on a mountain somewhere put him on a rock drew a circle around him was like you gotta stay there yeah. stay there for three days stay there for like three three days three four wow. days until he started having visions 
Really? Because because the next part of initiation process, sacred space, is the initiation process itself that's designed to offer you meaning in your life. That's why they look they go on vision quests so that you can come in touch with your true essence, your true calling, your true path. You can't find it out in the world because if you look into the world for your true path, you're going to see commercials, you're going to see MTV, you're going to see uh, Instagram, you're going to see all these fucking distractions and everybody else and what the world wants you to do. The only way to actually get in touch with your true life path is to separate yourself from the world and then you have to go through a period of challenge and austerity. That's why fasting is always involved. Exercise, like a challenge of some sort, hunt, kill a tiger, you know, do all kinds of crazy shit. We're not killing tigers, yeah. but we do a lot of physical activities, a, little, a lot of challenging physical right. and emotional activities at grounding camp so that you can get out of your own way and that you can open up so that those visions can get clearer to you. Nobody can tell you your path. A lot of people come to me and they want to know, Elliot, what's my path? What should I do? Do I go this way or go that way? It's wrong for me to even, don't ask me that. Yeah. But what I can offer you is a process to get out of your own way. So it's like, here, shake all that crazy shit off. Yeah. Get out of your head. Open yourself up so that you can receive your path for that next 12 years. Yeah. That's why that happens every 12 years, because you're about to go around the clock again. So when you come to grounding camp, it's a separation from the world of the mother, the feminized world. It's a world of masculinity. That's why it's all men. Then there's a process. We do a whole lot of active meditations and bioenergetics, a lot of clearing the mind and, and clearing the body so that your path can be revealed to you. And then the third part that's always essential for life path initiation, all our ancestors, all traditions had this, were elders, older men who have been through hell, mm -hmm. through, like you and I. Yeah. Like you could talk to me about healing and woundedness because I'm a wounded motherfucking man. Yeah. So you come to me with all your, your, your ills yeah. I can't have compassion. Yeah. I have much more compassion for young men now that I've gone through my own woundedness, yeah. my own healing. Sure. I had to be beat the fuck up yeah. <laughs> so that I could say, yes, I understand yeah. and, I, and I love you, but I know you can do this yeah. because I did it. And so that's really what Grounding Camp is about. We get together. It's great because it's all men and we talk about shit that men talk about with men that even when we're out in the feminized world, we're afraid to talk about because you might hurt somebody's feelings. Sure. Yeah. So, grounding camp, your feelings get hurt at grounding camp, that means we're doing the right thing. Yes. We're going to talk about shit that hurts. You know, so we talk a lot about a lot of things like women. Yeah. I, women hurt for men. Yeah. It hurts because sure. a lot of our original wounds come from our separation from our mother. Mm -hmm. And it's this inappropriate lack of split from the relationship that we have with our mother that there's no ritual for in our society that causes us so much pain with our women. So there's a lot of emotional pain that comes up in dealing with the feminine. Yeah. So that's one big part of it. Another part of it is defining what masculinity is in your life, right? Because it's, we're, not, we're not one gender. We're different. And it needs to be very clear. If you're going to be with a woman, you need to be a man. And so these are the type of conversations that we we engage in, man. It's a really good time. Yeah, I, uh, I agree. That's kind of why I reached out to you. I don't know. I know you remember this, but like a couple weeks ago, like guys, I reached out to Elliot, and I've been friends with Elliot a long time. He's been a good friend of mine. He, like I said, Elliot would be there for me if I needed him, and I'd do the same. But when I saw he started posting about the stuff, and a lot of he got a lot of hate, but he also got a lot of support. And I felt compelled to really reach out to Elliot because I could see that he was helping the youth. I could see that he was helping men. And that was something I could get behind. Because the truth is, there are suicides happening. Yeah. There are legitimate reasons yeah. why men are getting outcasted. Yeah. There are the truths. And that's kind of why I just reached out to Elliot because I, I thought what he was doing was he was putting more good out in the universe. Yeah. And that's kind of why I reached out to you. Because I wanted to get on board and I wanted to support that. Yeah, bro. I thought that was what was really important. Yeah. And that's why I'm even getting a little emotional about it because it is, it's a very sensitive thing, but it's it's helping. Yeah. You're helping those people. Like like you said, I mean, I watched a video of you talking about these 
guys want to commit suicide in their early 20s and you're talking to them, you're telling them you feel for them. I mean, you're a huge public figure now, Elliot. Ten years ago, you weren't that. I mean, you and I were friends and you were you're just getting involved in YouTube. Now you're fucking basically world famous on YouTube and everything. And you got people reaching out to you and now you're doing it for a positive thing. That's something I can get behind, man. And that's what led me to contact you because you're helping people in a way that is indescribable and it's admirable, man. Thank you, Pat. And that's what, why I reached out to you. That's why I'm here, why I'm working out. Obviously, I wanted to talk about old times, but that is what really got me to be like, man, damn, Elliot, go. Like, seriously, Thank go. You, Keep going, man. Yeah, I'm happy to have you on board, brother. Yeah. Because you're a good man. Yeah. You're a strong man. Yeah. A manly man. A yeah, tech man. man that the world needs more of. It's happening. Yeah. It's happening with or without me. That's another one I like to say. This yeah. is from Ralph Waldo Emerson, that God will not have his work made manifest by cowards. That's why I can't be put off by the haters. I know they're there. I know you're there. But yeah. you know what? You're To me, it's a reflection of the demons within my soul that I've worked so hard to purge these past four years as I've gone through my own path initiation. So when I see them, it's not about them, it's not about me, it's about the spiritual battle. And Satan ain't gonna take me down. No. Because God will not have his work made manifest by a coward. And I ain't a fucking coward. I go out for this shit. Just like I would go out lifting that stone, even if it fell on my fucking chest like it almost did all those times when we were lifting it, shredding the body. Yeah. This is a soul battle, this is a spiritual battle. This is a battle between good and evil. Yeah. And so I'm willing to take as much hate as they bring, bro. Bring it the bring fuck it. on. That's why Jesus Christ has made such a comeback in my life. Willing to sacrifice the body. I even like, look at my body, it's torn biceps and a torn foot. And it's almost like a reminder. You got my sport. Yes. Yes. You you all, what else it, is there to do? Stack paper and drive fancy cars? They're serious. Right? That's all feminized shit. I mean, Buy fancy clothes and a better watch. Yeah. Right? What am I going to do? Seriously. Save souls, strengthen souls. I don't, actually, you know what? I don't save shit. I ain't saving nobody. I'm a strength coach. Strengthen right. the body, strengthen the soul. There's a lot of ways yeah, that people bro. are going about this in their various spiritual, esocentric ways. But I'm a man of the body. I'm a man of the sword. I'm a man of practical warrior application. So when we're going to do it, we're going to do it hard. That's why you see me with these guns. That's why you see me with this MAGA hat. Because if it has to be hardcore and I have to piss people off to wake them the fuck up, that's what I'm going to do. That's fucking right, bro. Yeah. you goddamn right. Yeah. So I ain't scared. I ain't scared no more. It was a time. I had, to, I had to battle my demons. I had to battle my fears. I had to battle those Satan deep fuck in my yeah, soul. Because I can't do this work. I can't. Just like you can't be a strength coach if you ain't get under the barbell, Fuck I couldn't that. be a soul coach if I didn't face my own darkness. Facts. So nothing could stop me. Right here, baby. So let's fucking soul. lift some weights. <laughs> let's soul. lift some motherfucking weights. <laughs>